Portland has three timeouts left. The Lakers have two. Bryant to shot. What's the one word that's a, that describes how your relationship with Kobe started in L.A.? It began with a lot of patience. Uh, Kobe has always been one of those guys to want to compete, want to be the best. He told me one time he was going to be the Will Smith of the NBA. He told me that at 18 years old. I was like, okay, young fella. But I, I saw something in him that, like, you know what? This kid definitely has a potential. Like, he, you, you know how they always say? People are, are, are in the gym a couple of hours before, a couple of hours after. That definitely was Kobe Bryant. Man, I'm a First veteran. to get there, last yeah, move. Yeah, because I'm a veteran. Practice is, is at 10. I'm, I'm arriving at 945. That's, that, that's just... 945, 955. <laughs> Come on, you're, you're giving yourself a little credit. 959, 30. Right, 955. So, <laughs> I mean, but he was always there. It was a game against Utah. I want to say it's his rookie or second year. You know, we're, we're getting pummeled in the playoffs. And nobody wants to take the last three shots. He takes them. They're all air balls. If you remember, you remember me walking off the court with him. I said, you know what? Everybody's laughing at you now. But one day, they're going to fear you taking these shots. And then it, become, it became sort of a respectful power, power struggle. So from a patient relationship to a respectful power struggle. Like, people always talk about the relationship, and you have to understand that leaders always have two difficult tasks. You have to focus on the relationship, or you have to focus on the task. Early, I focused on the relationship, and we got swept. Phil Jackson comes along, you know, makes us read books. You know, we have different, uh, you know, different way about doing things. So now I focus on the task, and it, studies show that when you focus on the task, relationships start, start to dwindle away. My sole purpose was to win, to win at any cost. And when you're deemed the leader, sometimes you have to make tough decisions. If you tell him he can't do something, he's gonna do it. You know, if you keep pushing buttons, it's gonna make him play at, at that next level. And I needed him to play at that level. He needed me to play at that level. So sometimes we, we competed with each other. And if we competed with each other, the best little guy, the best big man competing with each other, trying to be the best and do it inside a system, it spells, you know, success. You know, people always ask me about the relationship and I have to correct them sometimes. I say, you guys talk as if we didn't win any championships. We won three out of four. And if I had it all over to do again, I'd probably do it the same way. This is it, fellas. You work all year long for it, man. Shaq the man, most dominant player in the world. We stormed through the league three times in a row. But when everything started to shift a little bit and things started getting topsy-turvy. Not everything's going to work out, you know, with the perfect ending. Three weeks ago, he wouldn't even acknowledge Kobe, wouldn't even mention his name. He's been holding on to his hostility for Shaquille much too long. There comes a point in time we got to part ways. When you leave Los Angeles for Miami, you trying to tell me everything's cool between you and Kobe at that time? Yes and no. I didn't want to leave, but being a veteran in the business of basketball, I realized that you can't be two kings. And every 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 great movie that I've seen, mafia movie, just put it in, in better terms, the younger boss always takes out the older boss. So I knew it was gonna happen. After I, and I said to myself, going into the finals, you know, I put together this super team. I brought in Gary Payton, I brought in Carl Malone, Kobe, myself. If we don't win, change is going to have to be made. So I knew once we lost, I knew I was going to be in trouble. I didn't know how quick. It was like a week later, I'm sitting with Sharif and, and Miles and, and Shakir. We're eating cereal, and I see on ESPN that uh, Mitch Kupchak says Shaquille O'Neal uh, is open for trade talks. I was upset because I, I thought that they would give me a little bit more respect and at least call me on the phone and say, hey, we're thinking about moving you. The way they did it kind of upset me. And that's why when I went to uh, Miami, I had, I had a lot of, a lot of you know, harsh things to say. But this business. So where are you two now? We, we speak. We're uh, cool. You know, I, I saw them at the ESPYs. I went to the last games. Uh, 
Every time I see his daughters, I was, I was like, hello, I'm Uncle Shaq. And his older daughter said, you say that every time you see us. <laughs> so, you know, um, NBA stands for nothing but actors. So the beef that we have there will never spill over into real life. I see him with his beautiful wife and his lovely daughters. I'm not going to go throw a drink in his face. So, hey, what's up, Kobe? How you doing? And the times we had were special times, times that will never be forgotten. And, you know, a lot of people forget that 15 and 1 in the playoffs. You know, if it wasn't for Allen Iverson stepping over Tyrone Lou, we'd probably be the best NBA team ever to win a championship. And we still have the record. I was I was a little nervous last year when Golden State went 73 and I was like, man, they're gonna break our record. But they didn't. So, you know, two guys that hate each other still have that record. 15 and 1 to win a championship. And that'll never be broken. Hated each other. Well, two guys who they thought hated each other. <laughs> Look at Ernie, he's a little lawyer today. <laughs> what is this, Ernie, a deposition? Well, so there was their episode. There was no, there was no hate, Ernie, no hate.